Our dog use promo code alarm. They'll match you up to a hundred bucks. I have a cup <laughs> for Cooper <laughs> Cup, I guess. Make sure you, when you're at the Cheesecake Factory, instead of paying a tip, just write alarm in there. I can't, I, I'm like MacGyver with running back. Yeah, that's pretty true. That's true. And yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm getting word. You might get Joe Burrow in here. And hey, Joe! No, I'm not drafting anyone at all. I'm not going to. So quit asking. I've got information, man. Lightning House, let's ride. It's week eight. I'm Kevin Topkins, Brett Flynn, Andrew Cooper, and the tight end whisper himself, Mr. Howard Bender. Howard, how are you, my friend? I'm doing real well. Thanks for having me back. Twice in, in one season, my head was, was spinning. And then I was like, oh, well, uh, that's right. Coop's not going to be around. So they're just, they're they're desperate for somebody. So. Oh, I'm here, baby. We had, I mean, we had to move some people around. You know what I mean? We had to tell people. We had, you know, Matthew McConaughey wanted to come on. We said, hey, hold on. Got to let Howard in. He's the boss. So, you know, we had to put some people on the back burner for you, Howard. So. And he said, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I won't even. I won't even do it. I won't even. I won't even bow down to that kind of level and and give you the. The fans. The fans are in already. Look at that piling in. And to anybody, nor like any of the, our normal viewers, our boss is here. So behave yourself, okay? Oh, it's yeah. We are not trying to get. Well, I mean, it's probably going <laughs> to end up happening, but I'm trying not to get fired within the first five minutes. <laughs> Well, Sellers, for the record, Sellers goes, oh, Bender's going to be there? Oh, man. I'm definitely tuning in for that one. And I'm like, what do you mean, definitely? Like, you That's... don't every single time? Like, right? come on, dude. And now I'm like, what kind of shenanigans is Sellers going to throw out here for this show? So it should be pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, he's squad, made... baby. Should we just should we just clear the air right now? Should we just settle the whole Alan Lazard thing? Because... I, I feel like, I feel like, you know, I mean, I think everybody was kind of, oh, Kevin's gone. <laughs> I think people were like pitting us against each other because they know we work together and, and, and that was fine. That was great. You made your side of the argument. I made my side of the argument. Um, I just, I, I find it incredibly funny that when you finally, it took you seven weeks to understand what the, the what the vision was for Green Bay. And then you come around and, what happens? Then you jinx Lazard, his shoulder hurt, <laughs> and now you're like, ah, ah, Bender, I told you he wasn't going to get 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns because he's not even going to be on the field anymore. So, I, I, you know, I got it, but I, I still, nothing but love for you, Kev. Nothing but love. You, you know what? It was really just a, a, a six-month bit that, that went way too long. Um, I mean, that's, <laughs> I'll just say this. You figured me out. You got me red handed. You got me red-handed. <laughs> Listen, I <laughs> did you really genuinely think that I believe that Alan Lazard was going to get double-digit tar targets in his first game back from from his ankle issue? Like I dyed my stupid hair green for the guy for crying out loud. It's like, right there you go. Uh, I think the uh, the the quote that I gave today, and I just let me just I got because this is actually kind of funny and, and a little bit apropos for it. But the quote that I used today for food for thought on fantasy alarm was um, the universe is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. Like if you didn't think there was a little bit of a bit there with the Alan Lazard stuff and dyeing <laughs> my hair green and you and me back, come on. Of course, I know, dude. right? I mean, come on, it's it's high comedy. You gotta you gotta be in on the gag. Marketing but, genius. But Al Al Lazar, dude, kind of doing his best uh, Adam Thielen impression so far. No, when you look at the stats, there touchdowns all over the place, targets steady. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, he's not too. You know what? I'd say he's probably a more target earning Gabe Davis. I think yeah. that's fair to say. Yeah. I, I will that. fully admit that. Good player. Nobody ripped that. Nobody clipped that. Um, I do have a brand <laughs> to uphold. Nobody sent that to fantasy well. receipts. <laughs> yeah, please don't do that. He, uh, yeah, he was watching last time, which that scares no, me a little yeah, bit. Gabe Davis, he's, he's a boomer bus guy, right? Come on. We don't yeah. need him. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. No Lazard is the boomer. And, you know, never mind. Easy right. now. I easy. Will say, I will I say this. One. 
Mike Williams' high ankle sprain combined with Alan Lazard's start to the early season could put them actually a little bit closer. And John and Pemba uh, popped that over on uh, on Twitter. They, they could be a little closer. So actually that, that hot take that I made real early on in the season might actually play into my favor. Of course, everybody be like, oh, well, he got hurt, so who cares? Correct. Either way. We're, uh, ne- we're never allowed to have anything, Howard. You know that. I am not allowed nice things, dude. Okay. You almost we well, you had so, we had such a nice thing going, didn't we? With jo- with uh, David and Joku, and there's another another nice thing that was taken away from us, right? You were all over that one. I was in there with you, and good God, man, there is no God. What are you talking? Uh, about? <laughs> Wait, this is why we can't have nice things by Taylor Swift. Uh, I know, right? The foxhole <laughs> is empty. Oh, no, right now. All these colors? all these grown ass. You can't there have a grown ass man on your team anymore. There he is, dude. Sellers throwing us right into the bus. It's crazy. Sellers, I've never seen anybody make friends with with the highest of big wigs the way he did at the expo. I was, I thought, I thought he was going to be our boss coming into the season after hanging out with you, Al, the whole gang, dude. Sellers, <laughs> Sellers is a he's a man of the people. He truly is. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, compared to, compared to Howard, I mean, between me, Britt, and Coop, expired, we- expired, expired. expired. <laughs> I mean, it just is what it is. But um, I mean, however you want to talk about Lazard, let's talk about the uh, the most valuable players. And fa- we're almost we're pretty much through halfway of the fantasy season right now. Um, so let's talk about who are the MVPs of fantasy football so far as we head into week eight. Howard, I'll let you field this one first. Well, it's Alan Lazard, of course. <laughs> oh, you had it on the show sheet. <laughs> I had it all over the show sheet for you. As soon as I got the show sheet, I was like, oh, here we go. Beep, 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 beep. But you know what? I can actually go with a, a, a different player of that that same ilk. If you want to talk about my f- most valuable player in fantasy football right now has got to be Nick Chubb. Yeah. Nick Chubb, who fell out of favor with, with everybody but me. And, you know, and, and I was able to grab him like mid to late second round. In, in a number of drafts and and like what he's like he's top three in in rushing attempts yards per ca- yards per game uh he's up top in uh, in yards per carry if you want to set a minimum of you know a number of uh, i don't know 85 yards uh 85 rushing attempts so i mean he's tops everywhere he's getting the work i actually did battle with somebody a little bit of a debate on twitter because they, they sent this misleading tweet that kareem hunt with his touches in the red zone and you know it was just like you know go after kareem hunt kind of incite you know just insinuating that kareem hunt is the you know the the more explosive back or the better back in uh in cleveland and i was just like you know yeah kareem hunt can have all the touches between the 15 and the 20 he wants those definitely clarify or classify as um you know red zone touches but it's nick chubb nick chubb he's getting the Come on. Like even you, Kevin, a guy who hates running backs as vehemently as you hate running backs, you cannot argue with the fact that watching Nick Chubb run all angry and like he's not one of the the best things to watch in a football game. Yeah, like Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb is objectively like one of the best running backs in the NFL, like from a physical standpoint, just on the field, like he is one of the best rushers for fantasy. I mean, the, the one knock on him has been the lack of production in the receiving game, or at least a lack of opportunity to be able to show what he can do in the receiving game. Um, you know, the, the top two backs right now in PPR formats are Eckler and Barkley because they have, uh, you Who's know, some of that number three is Nick Chubb. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I mean, Nick Chubb is uh, can be efficient enough in that Brown, Browns offense. The way he runs, the what he gets, uh, you know, with that red zone work, with you know his production on the ground, that he can keep up with those guys. I mean, he's just on the cusp of twenty fantasy points per game so far in those seven games. So, you know, Nick Chubb has staying power. He can easily be a top five, you know, at minimum running back this year. So, yeah, he's definitely a good choice. Yeah, and that's why I appreciate Howard so much. Is that Howard? You're a, you're a you're a football realist. You know what I mean? You're a fantasy guy, but like so, like me for instance, I get real deep in the spreadsheets, doing all sorts of weird stuff, and I always have to check back in with you to tell me things like T.J. Hawkinson sucks. You know, which at times, <laughs> which at times he does, right? And then like when you tell me Nick Chubb is good, right? And I'm like, yes, I know he's good, 
their numbers backing up, but I'm such a such a spreadsheet guy. Like it brings me back to the fact of the matter here, which is that all the spreadsheets in the world, it doesn't matter because when Sunday comes around, there's two things that matter: first downs and touchdowns. Right. And when the time comes, I mean, if you look at the numbers, leading the league in first downs, Josh Jacobs, 30, 36. Second, Nick Chubb with 34. Nobody else has 30. Like when push comes to shove and it's time to get the first down, like the, when you watch your favorite team, you're upset when they punt and you're pumped about first downs. Nick Chubb is the dude that's making it happen. So, I mean, forget the spreadsheets with this guy, dude. He's awesome. Well, and if you want to go even a little bit further than that and talk about how he's going to actually win you your league, going down the stretch, like once Deshaun Watson comes back, their opponents are bottom five in containing the running back down the stretch. When we're actually in the fantasy playoffs, when it actually matters, I mean, Chubb is going to absolutely eat. Not only are they going to have to respect the run as they've already been forced to do, but now they're going to have to uh, be forced to respect the pass down the stretch. Like Nick Chubb is just that guy. And I love watching him play. He's an absolute joy. Let's go. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Britt Coop. What about you guys? Uh, Whoever wants to go next, uh, your MVP so far. Ladies first, Britt, you got it. Thanks. Um, So I'm going to go Josh Jacobs. Um, I think, you know, I, I will be fully transparent when we wrote those. uh, Yeah. Toronto Dave. I got you, man. Um, Whenever we wrote those player debates over at Fantasy Alarm, I fully bought into the narrative that Josh McDaniels was going to use a rotating backfield. I bought into the narrative that since uh, since Josh Jacobs started the Hall of Fame game, that he was lower down on the totem pole. I bought into the narrative that since they didn't pick up his fifth-year option, that they weren't going to use him. And everything that I thought has been proven completely wrong. I mean, Josh Jacobs has absolutely been explosive. He's already uh, running back four overall, and he had a bye last week. When you look at actual fantasy points per game, he's second. I mean, this guy is just a juggernaut on this Raiders offense. They couldn't really get anything going with the passing game, which is so shocking considering that they brought in Devontae Adams that they can't do that. But Jacobs is out to prove something. He is out to prove that he is worthy of a contract, that he is still... Uh, a great running back that he still has gas in the tank and where you got him in drafts. I mean, what the sixth or seventh, sometimes even eighth round, the absolute steal of the fantasy season. So that's why he's my MVP. It's a little bit more invested in draft capital and the production's just icing on the top. So Cooper, We're all speechless. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll say it right now. I was wrong on this 100%. Like, I came in, I was, you know, I got too lost in the sauce of, I, I, you know, I'm a Patriots fan too. So, like, I got lost in the Josh McDaniels, Erhart Perkins offense, you know, Brandon Bolden, split backfield for 20 years, blah, blah, blah. No, nah, they're not doing that at all. They're doing the opposite of that. They're using him like Najee Harris last year. Like, Najee Harris this year isn't even being used like that. He's the guy every – Yeah, yeah he's, Don't go right. He's a guy every single down. So, I mean – I moved him up starting week three, apologized profusely for making an assumption that they wouldn't do that because they are. And like you had to get on it as early as possible. We tried to tell everybody, do your best. But I mean, like it's too late now. Right. Cats out of the bag on this guy. Um, Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't want to brag, but I was touting him all all preseason because they didn't give him a a, they didn't pick up the fifth year on his on his contract. And he's talented and he doesn't have a, a huge amount of mileage on him. And it was actually, it was, you know, Josh McDaniels. I was reading an article about going back to traditional Earhart Perkins, which is predicated on the power run and, and knowing that they had Jacobs to be able to do that. And I know that they, you know, they brought over Brandon Bolden and I definitely did get a little nervous. I was like, Oh, great. You know, McDaniels is going to find a way to screw us on this, but they really have been just running it hard with Jacobs. I mean, watching him, that breakout game against Denver a couple of weeks ago was just absolutely phenomenal. And then this past week has been uh, outstanding too. So I, I love it, man. I think that, you know, he's getting the touchdowns. He's getting the carries. Dude's going to get paid. That's that's what it's that mm-hmm. chip on the shoulder. He's going to get paid because there are plenty of teams that are looking for a, uh, a, a full-time back. And, and the dude has shown that he can catch passes too. So I love it. I think it's a great call. 
And if they want to go full DeMarco Murray mode and run him into the ground in the last year of his contract, fantasy football likes that. I'm, I'm cool with that. that. Yeah, I'm a big fan. <laughs> big fan of that. Let's do it. <laughs> Coop took all my talking points. DeMarco Murray. Erhard oh, Perkins. I gotcha. Oh, Erhard <laughs> Perkins is mine, though. This is New England out here, dog. That's no, sorry, the right Hufflepuff there, Gryffindor system. <laughs> that Hufflepuff Gryffindor system. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Josh Jacobs was a guy I was not drafting. Like, all the signs were, were negative, but, you know, the fact that they're going to DeMarco Murray him into the ground. The, the thing with next year is, you know, now we're seeing all these running back contracts just looking like albatrosses, like the Ezekiel Elliott contract. I mean, doesn't look great from a team perspective. I mean, separate that from how he's doing on the field. I mean, it's all about finding somebody we're willing to pay, you know, what if Josh Jacobs is going to be like a top three running back in fantasy, obviously that's going to bode well in real life NFL too. So it's finding the, the team or the GM that's willing to pay Josh Jacobs. He's either going to be a guy that gets signed on day one or a guy that gets signed in like the end of May or, or something like that, just because he's going to command way more than teams want to spend. Like, it's just going to be, a, I feel like it's a weird dichotomy there, but there's no doubt, you know, Josh Jacobs has been the steal relative to draft position uh, in fantasy this year. Uh, Coop, what about you? I'll go ahead and say it, man. This is a guy that I, I don't draft myself, you know, because I, we, so I contractually obligated to, I'm contractually obligated to find, to do my best to find late round tight ends. So I spend a lot of time doing that. You know what I mean? But Travis Kelsey, my goodness. Throw positional scarcity out the window because this guy right now is if you take all the wide receivers and all the tight ends and put them in one bucket in half PPR, this guy is number three and in full PPR is number four. Like you draft him for the positional scarcity, but he's just straight up scoring all the points like he has the third most points behind only Stephon Diggs and Cooper Cup more than Jamar Chase, more than Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams. And he is a tight end at a position that's brutal this year. Travis Kelsey, to me, like if you made that call for yourself, congratulations, man, because you got the position, positional scarcity and now you can figure the rest out. You know, hang on to that guy, make it through this bye week and you are cruising, baby. So good for you. Yeah, I was a little nervous um, after everybody's reaction in the Kings Classic because it was my first auction draft that I've ever done. And I was like, I'll be damned if I do not get Travis Kelsey. That is my guy. I'm doing Adam like, too. I'm doing it. Yeah. Me and Kev, we're on the right track. And I mean, I felt like I might have overbed for him slightly, but Travis Kelsey has single handedly saved my bacon <laughs> in this yeah. specific league. And I'm uh, so glad that I have him. So I couldn't agree with you more. I play in the uh, the Greenwich Street Tavern League. It's a, a higher stakes league that Adam Ronas brought me into. Um, and I have uh, the Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey stack. And nice. that's just, that's like, that's, that's like when, you you're, a, when you're like money. a little kid and you like, you know, and you came in from like a hard day sledding in the winter. And then you're, you sat down in front of the fire and your mom wrapped a little blanket around you, give you a hot mug of cocoa. And you're just sitting there, just getting all warm. <laughs> that's what it's like <laughs> being a Travis Kelsey owner. Like that's, the warm it feels that good. The warm and fuzzies, right, dude? <laughs> I thought you said it was. I thought you were gonna say it was like coming in from being outside in the winter and jumping on to play like NBA Jam, and then using Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, and just everyone's like, "That's not fair." And it's like, "Well, sorry." <laughs> and using any, using any other tight end is like using like BJ Armstrong and, and Tony Kukoc. <laughs> See if if you guys want to don't talk grow about up on the playing- Kukoc. You want to play Pong. Pong, that was what I came inside for. That was the video <laughs> game for me, people. Stop being so young. Stop, stop OG, shaming man. my age. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kelsey, Kelsey's been awesome. I mean, combine the tight end five and tight end six, like they're scoring, and that's pretty much what you get with Travis Kelsey. Like tight end five is Hawkinson, tight end six is somehow Taysom Hill. Combine them, and you're pretty much a point off of what Kelsey has done. That's how he, how much he laps every other tight end in, in PPR scoring. So, I mean, Kelsey's just that dude. I mean, there's not really much else to say. Uh, that hasn't been already been said about him. Um, and I'm going to stick with the wide receiver group. So we have our, jo- our Cooper Cups, our Justin Jeffersons, our, uh, our, our Jamar Chases. 
Stefan Diggs, I'm going to make a case for. I honestly think the MVP is probably Jalen Hurts, uh, just where he's going to be at the end of the season. But I'm going to make a, a compelling case, I believe, for Stefan Diggs. Um, through six games last year, this wide receiver had uh, 152.8 fantasy points, 25 points per game, 68 targets, 43 receptions, 653 yards, seven touchdowns. That was Cooper Cup. Stefan Diggs is right there with Cooper Cup's pace last year. The fact that, I mean, him and Josh Allen are just, is printing money at this point. Um, I, I, I just believe that Stefan Diggs is, is on, he's him and Cooper cup and even Tyree kill. These guys are like lapping the competition as well. Stefan, uh, what they're going to do to green Bay, uh, like I'm going to have to go into the fetal position in, in my basement. It's going to be just downright despicable, but yeah, just the Stefan Diggs going as like wide receiver five. You could get him with, you know, like a Saquon Barkley type, or even like an Austin Eckler type, like that's. That might be the league winning formula right there in a lot of leagues is getting pretty much your RB1 and RB2 and your wide receiver one. So um, relative to the rest of the guys that were being drafted ahead of him, I mean, Stefan Diggs just seems like a big, uh, just a clear exclamation point at the wide receiver position. I don't, dude, I don't know why you had to preface that by saying, like, I'm going to try and make a case for this guy. He's the number one wide receiver in half PPR, and he's already had his bye week. Like, he's played one less game than everybody, and he's amazing. You know what I mean? I, case case closed, right? Like, he's awesome. And you start him every single week, and it's good. Well, and that's the thing with Stefan Diggs, too, is that where a lot of other wide receivers get kind of phased out due to game script, Buffalo don't play that game. Like we saw it against Tennessee, like they will pass, 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 pass. They don't care how much they run the score up on you. And that is so valuable to a player like Diggs, especially, and get, even Gabe Davis. Um, you know, they don't care if they're winning. They want to win and they want to make a statement. I think Buffalo has been kind of shat upon for so many years that they're tired of it. And and Diggs is going to benefit from that. So, yeah. Howard, what do you think? Um, I like uh, Josh Hudson's statement right there, talking about Alan Diggs being, you know, this year's, you know, over Mahomes Kelsey. I, yeah, like you said it right there, Britt. They they'll run up the score. They don't care. It doesn't matter to them. They're just going to keep throwing. I mean, it's so funny too, right? You see Josh Allen. They're up by three scores, and Josh Allen's running for a first down and diving as if this was. You know, his, uh, you know, they, like it was like the Super Bowl that he was playing in and the game was well in hand. So, yeah, from a fantasy standpoint, it's like if you had Cooper Cup last week, last year, I mean, that was that was a huge winner for you. Stefan Diggs putting up comparable stats, knowing that it's not going to stop. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Beautiful. 100%. Um, so on the flip side, um, Britt, your biggest fantasy disappointment, and we both share the same sentiment, so uh, I'm sure we're going to hit on a lot, a lot of the talking points, so I'm going to give you the un unenviable task of uh, speaking for me uh, on this uh, pass catcher. Yeah, this just hurts my soul so much because the talent is sky high. Um, I wrote about it in the Hot Takes article this week over at Fantasy Alarm that Kyle Pitts is almost, or, well, he is droppable because Arthur Smith flat out refuses to pass the ball. He's like the Lamborghini meme under the lean to with the trailer <laughs> next to him. That is what Kyle Pitts is in this Arthur Smith offense. Like, yeah, everyone wants to tout his target share, but zero times zero is still zero. I mean, he is not getting the usage that we thought. We thought that Atlanta would be forced into negative game scripts, which they have been. But rather than pass the ball when they are in those negative game scripts, Arthur Smith just continues to like use a hodgepodge of uh, fifth round and and undrafted running back. So it's just inexplicable, um, super disappointing. And we all took Kyle Pitts very, very high. Um, and if you're like me, you took Kyle Pitts in a lot of your leagues because you did bet on the talent. And it has let you down uh, through numerous leagues, and it just sucks. You thought that you were getting the tight end, like the end of that top tight end tier before it dropped off. And, uh, I mean, you might as well stream at this point. I, Brent, one caveat here I have to say is that you said that he's not getting the usage that we thought, but he kind of is. 
Like he's playing more than half his snaps at wide receiver. He's got a the second highest target share of any tight end. Like the usage is and there. And again, I said zero times yeah. zero is still zero. Exactly, dude. Yeah, he had a, this week a thirty eight percent target share. Uh, which of the thirteen targets that were available, he had five. So you, uh, he, I mean, so he's for the minimal amount of time he's out there, he's out there doing what we thought he would do, which is play wide receiver and run around. But yikes, dude, this team, I mean, is it self-sabotage, Kev? What's going on? What is Arthur Smith doing, Kev? Tell me. He don't give an F about nothing. <laughs> That's what he's, that is what he is doing. <laughs> it's the offensive environment is so bad. Like he might as well be coaching the Decatur Staley's at this point. Like if anybody gets that, it's probably Howard. And I don't even know if he'll get that. Um, it is like 1920s black and white leather helmet football at this point. It is so bad. I mean, the fact that you spent two top eight picks on Drake London and Kyle Pitts, and then you'd want to run your fifth round, you know, Tyler Algiers, your Avery Williams, your con- converted cornerback Avery Williams, and run out Caleb Huntley and let and hide Marcus Mariota. Basically what you're doing is hiding Marcus Mariota. Like if he's not... If you don't trust him to pass the ball in a negative game script, like you're, you have issues. Like, and it's not as though you're like five and one right now. You're three, what, three and four? Like, something's got to give, and and it's not going to be the players. It's going to happen. It, it, it's going to be the coach, and they're not going to fire the coach. My dude, Marcus Mariota has attempted one hundred and fifty one passes this season. Joe Flacco has attempted one hundred and fifty five, and he got benched four weeks ago. Four weeks ago, dude. <laughs> like insane. It's, it's crazy that they, that they don't even remotely throw it. I, and I don't, you know, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I mean, I, unless, unless they're just quietly tanking for Stroud in that, in that sense, because they realize that Desmond Ritter <laughs> probably sucks at football. So they're, they're not looking you know, at I think they're already looking ahead to that. There's zero explanation. Like you just said, to be down that big in a game and to continue just run Tyler Algier over and over. I mean, it was just, it, it, listen, and I have Algier in a couple of leagues. I'm like, you know, don't run. It's this not guy. even efficient running. Like no, they're it's, not, it's not it's gross. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. It's bad. And let's Britain, move on. I don't want to think bad. about it anymore. Howard, yeah, Howard, who, I'm who's let you like down? I'm sick. Right. <laughs> Kyle, well, Kyle Pitts has let me down. Right. Um, All of us. Is he ever? You know, I'm just I'm gonna go, I'm gonna throw it to uh, to Najee Harris because you know here's a guy who was being taken in the first round, and I know that you know as 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 we got closer to the start of the season, people were starting to get a little unnerved. There was that talk of the Liz Frank sprain, and uh, and you know the offensive line didn't get improved all that much, and Mitch Trubisky sucks at football. Yeah, everything that you could possibly pile on there, and so but Najee stayed in the first round. And what we're seeing right now is just, I mean, there's, there's, it's nothing is there. Nothing is there. And at least last year he had that value because of all the check downs to him and he was catching all those passes. And that was, that was, you know, helping him a bunch. Then now this move to Kenny Pickett, he's not about throwing check downs to, to, you know, Najee Harris and Najee Harris isn't even being an effective runner at this point. So, you know, to, to just to, to bust your, your first round pick, because that's the thing also, he's your first round pick and he's healthy. So you're like, well, I gotta, I gotta start him, don't I? Not anymore. Yeah, it's a correlation. We've seen it. And we've seen it mathematically prove that mobile quarterbacks, however mobile, don't dump it down. Like you want, you want Drew Brees back there, you know, panicking and just flicking it over to Alvin Kamara, right? You want Big Ben, literally statuesque, flipping it over. Kenny Pickett can scoot. We've seen it. And the sad part is that once every week, Najee Harris shows that flash of him being good, right? He, he does every once a week, he'll, he'll scoot, he'll, he'll escape and he'll break a tackle. And you're like, Oh, there he is. And then you remember that this team sucks and the line's bad and the, the quarterback doesn't like to dump it down. So way she goes and a cherry on top is that he's not playing 90% of the snaps like he did last year. And the sad part is they told us that was going to happen. The, RB coach said it, Najee said it, and you know, I didn't want to believe it, but turns out it's true. So when is coach speak ever true though? This one time. One time <laughs> this coach one speak time. is true. Right. Player one speak. Time. 
Or you've been trained by Bruce Arians all these years to not believe a damn word he says. And then <laughs> Perhaps the equation is coach speak plus player speak equals possible truth. Because that this time they they both told us and it ended up being true. Somebody good at mathematics, come up with a formula. I know there are it's a bunch me. of you Excel nerds out on Twitter. Let's let's make this happen. That's right. I was told <laughs> there would be we'll, no math. <laughs> we'll have hey Howard. We'll have Matt Sells break that down with the uh, yeah. with build a the, spreadsheet, Matt. The Excel sheet wizard, dude. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody out there, if you you know, shout out Matt Sells, dude. The three out of four time back to back NASCAR. Uh, writer of the year. He showed me his, he showed me his Excel for his NASCAR one time. And I thought I was looking into the matrix, dude. I thought I had <laughs> taken the red pill, bro. I, the, I didn't even know that you could have that many tabs, dude. They were labeled with, he got, he got past the ABC. It was like, there were, you know, it was like Zetas and Bay, like this spreadsheet for NASCAR is, it is like, a, no, that he is undoubtedly the best NASCAR guy there's ever been. And he crushes football too, obviously. So. Shout asked out to, Matt Matt Sells. Asked to see his spreadsheet for his uh for his home keeper baseball league. Like a, <laughs> oh, it's like a no. dynasty baseball <laughs> league that it is just the spreadsheet. He showed it to me. I still might have nightmares about it. Sorry, <laughs> There's just numbers everywhere. Matt, Moneyball two. Matthew sells his spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Coop, what about you? Oh, so me, mine comes with a little bit of a little hope at the end, right? And it's uh, a guy that we all, uh, or a lot of us hold dear to our heart, DJ Moore, a player who we were hoping would be potentially, you know, a guy like a, more like a Mike Evans, where you could count on him for over a thousand yards every year. He's had 1100 yards every year and, you know, that he would get an uptick in touchdowns potentially with a quarterback improvement. Cause you know, you play with Sam Darnold, all that. We should have listened to John and Pemba and his vehement hatred for, Baker Mayfield turns out he was right. Uh, so because DJ Moore has been brutal this year and unstartable at times. And the thing is now he's done. The worst thing you could do is, which is give us a little bit of hope. PJ Walker seems to like him, had a good game this week, but now the question is, do you start him? Cause if you go out and start him this week and he, and he kills you, then he's done the worst thing possible, which is you started him when he was bad. You benched him. Then he finally did something, and then he tricked you once again, which in fantasy football, it doesn't get much worse. I, so I don't know if you guys, if you believe the P.J. Walker narrative here with D.J. Moore or if you've given up, but for me, D.J. Moore has put me in some pretty bad spots in fantasy football this year. Yep. In my high money league, I drafted him, and he, I'm projected highest like every single week. Because for some reason, the people who do the projections just haven't caught on to the trend that he is not what we thought. They're holding on to hope as well. Um, And he's burned me a lot. Um, This week, I was forced to start him because Justin Jefferson and Singletary were on by. So I had to start him in a flex. It worked out. If I think it's going to work out going forward, uh, not really. I don't know. But I'm, yeah. We're, we're just going to have to wait and see. But I don't feel confident about it. I think I debated Kevin. Uh, did We did one of those player debates, and I think it was DJ Moore. And, I mean, everybody kind of warned me, too. They were like, ah, dude, you're you're going up against, like, the heavyweight champ of DJ Moore stands right now. <laughs> so just tread lightly. So I, I, I think I, I, I treaded lightly. I mean, I, I think my, my whole argument was basically that Baker Makefield sucks at football. And that's just going to, you know, that, that, you know, for a guy like DJ Moore, who, uh, you know, for what he's done for his numbers, um, yeah, over 1,100 yards, but four touchdowns and then three years in a row to have that. And now all of a sudden to get a, a, a downgrade at QB, like you couldn't believe that he was getting a downgrade at QB. Like, so, how is that even possible? I, <laughs> So, I mean, I love the player. I just didn't like where he was being drafted. I thought he was just being drafted too high for what they have, but I agree that you, you could, you could try and jump on this PJ Walker narrative and just say that, you know, the Panthers, because also what you're dealing with is the loss of McCaffrey frees up so many more touches for everybody around the, uh, the offense. And hopefully it does turn to that because I mean, listen, I do not want to see Deonta Foreman and Chuba Hubbard running the ball, like, you know, all the time for this team, that would just be a nightmare. I'd, I'd rather, ugh. 
Let me tell rather. <laughs> now, I'll throw the caveat out right now. If you if there's ever a time to start DJ Moore, AJ Terrell has a hamstring injury. I know Jalen Hawkins, the safety's banged up. Like, if you're not going to start DJ Moore this week against the Falcons, then you need to either trade or drop the guy. Because now is the time. But I mean, just be just be ready. As Michael Scott said, be ready to be hurt again. Yeah. Um, how would you like to be the guy that out of all your best ball, the top two exposures were DJ Moore and Kyle Pitts. How would you like to be that guy? Because that guy is the currently person that's currently talking right now. That's me. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Kevin. Like long walks on the beach and hurting myself in fantasy football. Um, so, yeah, DJ Moore, I mean, he's been just so consistent with terrible quarterbacking. And then uh, we didn't think it would get worse. It did. But there was light at the end of the tunnel. He had his first top 10 finish uh, in PPR this year. He's never, uh, he has not been a top 24 uh, producer in the top first six weeks of the season. We finally got it with XFL standout PJ Walker. So with Christian McCaffrey, like the fact that you've got all these basically replacement players right now, when Shai Smith and Tommy Tremble and and Terrace Marshall and, you know, I don't even care to know who else, Steven Sullivan, whatever. Um, the fact that you got all, like, you have to target DJ Moore. You have to hyper target him. And it's going to be the point where it's, he's going to basically be like, a, 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 I can't even say a better version of Deontay Johnson because Deontay Johnson all season has been just an inefficient based on his quarterback. Like he's been getting 12 targets, but he only brings in like five of them. That's pretty much you're hoping DJ Moore has that and then just breaks one. Like that's, that is your hope for, for Carolina is just death by a thousand cuts and hope he breaks one. Another Taylor Swift reference. Love it, Kev. I didn't even plan on that. I have only gotten through like the first four songs of the new album. Um, how, how many Taylor Swift references do you plan? Um, as many as humanly possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see many on the show. She oh, are, quick. Are we mocking the national treasure that is Taylor Swift. This new album slaps. It's got oh. a couple of skips on it, sure, but overall. Um, no, Bender, no skips whatsoever. Uh, yeah, there might be a skip or two. <laughs> listen, listen to it more, then you won't skip them. You, the more you listen to it, the more it it grows. Do you me. honestly think I'm sitting at home listening to Taylor Swift? A hundred percent. My wife and I are hey. breaking up. I got no you heard. Too. You heard from no. our from our from our local Taylor Swift expert the trick to not skipping songs is to not skip them. It's as well, simple so as that, Howard. I, I love that you said, Howard, that um, that you're in a happy marriage and not broken up because Sellers comes home last night and says, is the reason that you like Taylor Swift because you're unhappy with me and you <laughs> feel like you need to listen to sad breakup songs? I've been dying ever since. See? That was definitely a side note, but I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Well, oh, speak. Howard, I know you're not a Taylor Swift expert. You are a fish expert. And I know you're also a tight end aficionado and expert as well. We have a question in the chat. Lax bands. Where do you think Isaiah likely slots into weekly tight end rankings if Andrew can't go? And this is a question that honestly people are going to have to deal with because the game is tomorrow. So if he's not playing tomorrow, where do we draw the line of pick this guy up and start him? You know, I mean, I feel like there's there, there obviously aren't that many tight ends really worth starting at this point anyway. So, I, I you know, I think that if, if you're sitting there, if, if Mark Andrews is ruled out, um, I, I would probably – I would say that if you didn't have – well, Kelsey's on a bye, so we can't even, we can't even deal with that. Can't go there. Uh, can't even go there. So I guess – I would probably it's say rough, Goddard, right? Kittle, yep. like go, guys like that are, are guys who I would still start over Isaiah likely. He's probably at like the, the middle to the back end of the top 10 in tight ends or, or would be right. just knowing what the, uh, what the Ravens offense is and going up, matching up against Tampa Bay. So, uh, you know, I, I would use him, but then again, I'm also like, I'm all in on Harrison Bryant this week too. Right. So Of course. Yep. Yeah. Well, let me, so let, me, let, me throw, let me throw you one at you, Howard, because I think this is what it's going to boil down to for a lot of people. There's people that pay attention and there's people that don't. And the people that are paying attention with these decisions, like say you were sitting there with Mark Andrews and tomorrow comes up and you got to pick one 
Uh, Cameron Brait's already been ruled out. Kate Otten has been pretty good with no Cameron Brait. If you're picking one guy in this game, are you going to go Kate Otten or are you going to go Cam- uh, Isaiah Likely? If um, if Andrews is out, I'm definitely if Andrews going, is out. I'm going Likely over Kate Otten. I love it. I love it, man. I, I'm and the, the the big thing for me is that if you look at the numbers for likely, he's played like 86% of his snaps at wide receiver. He he never passed blocks. He basically is Mark Andrews, except his understudy, right? So, you know, if Andrews is out, I'm in. I'm with you. Go go big. You know what I mean? In this environment, in this economy, Kev? In this economy? It, 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 yeah. The position's <laughs> ridiculous right now. I mean, I, I've crazy, been bro. telling people over and over again, they're like sitting here trying to – Rotate. They're trying to chase tight ends. What I did in 2017 with chasing tight ends, you can't do that now. There's just uh, it's it's not available to you. These guys are all just pieces of garbage. I was, oh, I'm a Greg Dulcich. Okay, sure. Why not Greg Dulcich? Just tread you know, lightly. <laughs> yeah, this is a no Greg Dulcich slander show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not slandering the guy. I'm no, just saying I'm the guy's, the, guy's no the Dulcich hour me. comes up. No, at, how, at the top, but, yeah. but Howard's right. Howard's right. <laughs> Howard's right though. The f- dude, like we've been doing this for a long time, man. I've been playing since 2000. The number of times that a rookie tight end has come off the bench to be relevant is damn near close to zero. Oh. Like oh. the all, like like there's been maybe two that have started as rookies. It's like Ingram, Pitts, maybe Jeremy Shockey. Like there are no rookie tight ends don't usually do anything and they never come off the bench. Like the fact that Dulcich is even in the question is such a weird situation, man. Like, Has one ever come in with that kind of hair, though? See, now now is where you're getting into the real oh, yeah. the nitty-gritty. Oh, yeah! Oh, my God! Look at that hair! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! It's so beautiful! Thank you. Doesn't hold a candle to what Mac Hollins has on his head, I'll tell you that. Mac Hollins is a certified weirdo. Like, he, ah. he walked into, like, Good Morning Football with no shoes on. Wow, Matt Collins' hair is glorious, dude. He looks like Sideshow Bob. He looks like he's like the lost member of Kiss. You know whose hair scares Howard me? Is, re- is just re- salty about Matt Collins because I picked him up the week that Hollins went off for 30 points when we played against each other. And so. then you said he was the <laughs> top target in, for the Raiders in your hot takes, didn't you? Ta- Not the ta- top, but over take a, a, I said take a look. Top three. Take a look at Richie James's hair. The, it it looks like he's a, his head is a human. It's like a spider. That that hair. When I see it, I'm just like, I, no, what, in what world do you wake up and you look at it and you're like, that's it. That's me. I mean, <laughs> what, what, what's up with with Robbie Anderson that he's not like doing duets with the Island Boys? That's oh, true. God. That's true. Right? I mean, look at the, the, the hair's ridiculous. We got to come up with it's like the all hair team Mac Holland, Richie James, yeah. Robbie Anderson. Those are our wide receivers. Dulcich is our tight end. That's the squad, dude. You could get Kamara on there. I mean, Zeke, uh, from Zeke, time to time, even. Zeke too gets after it. Yeah. Oh Zeke, oh, Zeke, when he lets it go, like real puffed up. Top, yeah, he yeah. looks like the Chiquita banana lady. If you could get Tim T- all time, it would be Tim Tebow when they made him do the Friar Tuck haircut. Remember that? <laughs> That's the best, dude. That's the best hazing ever, dude. <laughs> I mean, I guess you got to go Trevor Lawrence as your quarterback right now. I mean, I, I, I dude, I would, I like to brush that hair. It looks dude, great. J- oh my god, jo- Justin Herbert's hair. Rest in peace, dude. Like he didn't. Yeah. He, oh, he hacked man. that thing off. By the way, I just wanted. I just had an epiphany. The Falcons offense right now is like if Team Tebow played football today. Mm, yeah. 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 Afraid to throw. Yep. All right. So, are we going to hit some of these other topics or are we, we're just completely off the reservation at this point? I thought we were <laughs> like, we're not even halfway through yeah. the topics we planned. We are so far off the It's all here now. now. It's all here, we've team got, now. Yeah. We've got our cheap carton cigarettes and we're on the highway back home. Um, so one player situation we're excited about week eight. We can hit these pretty quick. Yeah, let's uh, let's hit these without without weighing in other people weighing in unless they have something crazy. To say. Well, let's so hit them all, and then if we want to talk a little more, we can. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Howard. Oh, I'll go first. All right. Uh, show me Tua against Detroit this week. I mean, I am. I, I turned the the watch list into a drinking game. Every time I say smash spot, you got to do a shot. Uh, but you just read the Miami players because what's going on right now 
I mean, Tyreek and Jalen Waddle against this defense is going to be insanity. Mike Kosicki, you look at all of a sudden, guess who's guess who grasps the offense now? Guess who understands his role a little bit better? Two games last the last two games with Mike Kosicki, rock solid. Give me all the Raheem Mostert that you can give me, but the central piece right there is Tua and and what he's going to be able to do and set up, you know, in the pocket or roll out. I mean, what he's got right now, weaponry against one of the worst defenses in the world. Like that, I, I am 100% here. And it hurts me as a Jets fan to say it, but I'm 100% here for the Miami offense in week eight. And give me all the Tua you can give me. So I I got to say, I'm going to go to mine real quick, but you guys, I said I like Tua this offseason because of the weapons and you and Jim hurt my feelings. Not, I don't I don't need an apology or anything because it was right around the time where Tua threw probably the worst pass I've ever seen in the offseason. So you guys were right to laugh, but hey. <laughs> you give the guy that kind of, those kind of weapons in a matchup like this. We're I all turned on around board. on him late in the pre- late in the preseason. I definitely turned around on on Tua and yeah. you were hey when when the when the the flood was coming and the last few animals were getting on the ark. You you I saw you on there, Howard. I saw you on there, brother. Enough you made about it, dude. Evo. You're, a, you're a, you're in front of the mites. And the and the, and the ticks. I'll say, hey, same game, same game for me. I want to see DeAndre Swift back. I hope he's fully healthy. He's super fun to watch. You rem- people, it's the season moves so quick. You forget the first two games. DeAndre Swift was amazing. The first two games, he had like 170 yards. The first game, uh, second game, classic catching. He caught a touchdown pass. Dude did the whole thing. So I hope he comes back. I hope he's awesome. It's a lot more fun when there's good running backs that are catching the ball. Yeah, right. and along that same vein, I'm super excited to see Christian McCaffrey with a full snap share yeah. with these 49ers. We only saw him play at 28% snap share, and he still put up over eight points. Like, he was still just absolutely crushing. And now he gets the Rams, who have been bottom of the barrel in every defensive metric. I mean, this is going to be absolute insanity. I don't care that they want to talk about, like, rotating the backfield no if you have christian mccaffrey you're not rotating the backfield plus debo has a hamstring injury so he's not going to be as much of a factor i think the game script is going to be heavily in san francisco's favor and mccaffrey is going to eat cannot wait well we're going to talk about a running back here that also has a seat at the table uh it's tony pollard so zeke elliott uh clarence hill of the uh star telegram uh, did say that Zeke Elliott likely sidelined with a torn MCL. Now, whether that's a moderate, you know, sprain, which is technically a tear, that's one thing. But uh, it's unlikely that he's going to be playing, at least from what we've gotten right now. So, if that's the case, uh, the reason you've held on to Tony Pollard outside of the three, uh, of the four, uh, basically top thirty finishes at running back. Uh, is for reasons now. With Zeke Elliott is out, Tony Pollard is one of the best contingent running back plays in fantasy. So uh, they do go up against the Chicago Bears. Not very much scared of them. Uh, if Tony Pollard is going to be getting uh, even you know seventy five to eighty percent of the work load that Zeke Elliott was getting. Tony Pollard with his five point six yards per carry, I think he can uh, put up you know ninety to one hundred yards, and then some stuff on the uh, receiving end of the game. Maybe throws in a touchdown. And you're looking at a top six, seven running back on the league. So uh, Tony Pollard season might be here, folks. Can, can I put a quick caveat out there for any, anybody in all your fantasy leagues? Look around at all your leagues. If Kenneth Walker wasn't available when the injury happened, if uh, you know, Michael Carter wasn't available now, even though things changed. If Tony Pollard wasn't there, if Alexander isn't rost- Alexander Madison isn't rostered right now, stop saving all your fabs. Stop saving the number one draft pick because in leagues like that, it's too deep. You're never going to get the big one. You know what I mean? So like now's the time to take a look around and see like, did you have a shot to get Kenneth Walker? Did you have a shot to get Damian Pierce? If you never even had a shot and those guys were drafted from the start, just use your waiver priority or early. You were saving it for no reason because it's, just, it's not going to happen. But if those guys are available, then you might want to save the hundred bucks, even maybe trade for a couple extra fab because then you can really take advantage. So take a moment to look at that for, for next year because I do it all the time where I sit on fab for so long and I look around and I'm like, why am I saving my fab in the Scott Fishbowl? Nobody ever shows up that's like amazing. Like I should I should be jumping on guys right away. Yeah, you're 100% right. I mean, for the love of God, I spent a quarter of my fab on Marquise Goodwin this week. 
that's what I'm saying. You know, I'm like, like, dirty stuff hey, like that. Too. King's Classic, you have to. 14 teams. <laughs> but I look, I look back at the guys that went week one and two, and I'm like, God damn it. I should have just used my money. What am I saving it for? Like, all these guys are owned in some of these leagues. So just keep an eye, look at your look around the room and see if those guys are being available or not. If they're not, if they're never, if they were never available to you, spend like crazy next year. Go wild. Treat yourself. Or you just have to be uh, be smart and do it a week before everybody else is on them. Uh, well, if you're on fantasyalarm.com, then that's easy. But for everybody else, you're going to have to figure it out. Yep, for sure. Um, let's do the same thing we did with, uh, just running through these real quick. Uh, the player situations that we're nervous about, uh, Britt, I'll start with you. I'm really nervous about Sam Ellinger. Like I just, I know that Matt Ryan has been garbage. I know that the Colts offense as a whole has been garbage, but Michael Pittman is still ended up putting up points, even with a garbage offense. I'm worried what Ellinger does to that offense and those little pieces who have actually produced. I don't know if he's the answer or if they're just completely tanking to get like a Bryce Young or a CJ Stroud. In my opinion, I think they're giving, they're throwing in the towel and then it's going to be an absolute disaster. All three wide receivers played like every snap too last week. So it's literally just a full on dice roll. Yeah. He does have some rushing ability, Ellinger. So I'd like to see what they look like without uh, stuck in the mud Matt Ryan there. But yeah, um, I'll go. I I my I, I fear for Kenny Pickett's safety this week. I really do. Yeah. Right. The, the <laughs> Eagles. The Eagles defense looks ridiculous right now, and now they just added Robert Quinn. Right. They've already got 17 sacks on the season. I mean, quarterbacks. I think quarterback passer rating is somewhere in like the 65 to 70 percent. <laughs> for, for for quarterbacks going up against this Eagles defense. I fear for Kenny Pickett's safety. I really and, do. Those and, tiny little baby hands. And they're somehow getting better. The defense got better today. It did. And you'll here are the quarterbacks that the Eagles play. The Eagles are through their bye week. I might just trade. I have in so many leagues. I might just trade for the Eagles in every league so I don't have to think about it anymore. Just just to give myself the peace of mind not to think about it. These are the quarterbacks the Eagles play from here on out. Ready? Kenny Pickett, Davis Mills, Taylor Heineke. Sam Ellinger, Aaron Rodgers, Ryan Danhill, Daniel Jones, Justin Fields, Dak Prescott, da- Jameis Winston, Daniel Jones again. That I mean, Andy Dalton, no Jameis Winston. He's not facing Winston. Winston got benched. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, dude, tissue paper, bro. Might be All the way down. By them. Good. I hate good it. God. I absolutely hate it. Yeah, I'll give you guys mine real quick. Uh, I'm concerned in general that this this Thursday game is going to once again be a bad product. You know, uh, I've I it, it's hard to feel bad for Amazon Prime because Amazon, you know, is the, uh, the capitalist pig that rules the entire world. But <laughs> the uh, I mean, like brutally short week for the Ravens, especially. Like I I, I traded in the 15. The, one of the toughest leagues I'm in is one I'm in with Howard with a 15 team dynasty series XM. I traded everything I had for Lamar Jackson. He's got no weapons. Uh, Mark Andrews is hurt. Rashad Bateman's got the foot injury. He's gonna be throwing to what like Demarcus Robinson and De- Devin Duvernay. Patrick Ricard played 92 percent of the snaps last week. Like this team is just like a complete. They got nothing going on, man. Like it, it happens when you do that. So, and it's just the worst possible time for them and the Bucks, who are just a mess, to have a short week. So, I don't know. I fear. I fear this game is going to be uh, pretty scraggly. Yeah, and I'll stick right in, in that game on the other side. Tom Brady. Uh, I, I'm a bit worried. I want him to get back on track. Like the best game that he had was when Chris Godwin came back. Mike Evans came off of uh, suspension against Kansas City, and then after that. I mean, he had a pretty good game, but he's only thrown for more than one touchdown once, and it was in that game against Kansas City. Uh, like, I don't know, is 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 the is the divorce uh, getting a little tough on old Tom Brady? Like, it's 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 tough out there in these streets. Like Tom Brady, I mean, w- after before this season, there was only one quarterback who threw a pass at age forty five, and I'm pretty sure that was like what Steve the bird or something like that, or George Blanda, one of them uh, Blanda, that dude. played until they were like 97 years old. But 
when Pepsi um, was a nickel. Bland, Bland, Bland was also Bland, – Bland would throw a touchdown pass and he'd go out there and kick, kick, kick the, the extra, extra point. point. <laughs> so I'm go that yeah, once, and, dude. And then he'd back out and Smoking kick off. Smoking his cigarettes on the yeah. sideline like <laughs> – Yeah, it's a lucky strike. Right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'm very concerned about the Buccaneers. I mean, just needing they've, – they've got the pass volume. It's just been pretty inefficient, and they just – I mean, the fact that the Carolina Panthers game has to be a wake-up call for them, you, you got to figure. So, I mean, it, I, I'd say it's a pretty good get-right uh, against the Ravens who have not been able to do anything against the pass. So, uh, we might be getting an, uh, maybe an offensive explosion. I mean, Lamar Jackson hasn't even been that great this season anyway, at least in the last four, four or five games, so. Fingers crossed, but um, I, you know, about the Ellinger, um, I will circle back to that real quick. I mean, the fact that the Colts did this, I mean, it's not like they were really losing. I mean, they've had some bad games, but they're still three, three and one, you know, if they were like, you know, one and six, you know, that's certainly worth the talking point, but they must really believe in Ellinger. Um, the fact that they're three, three and one and still in this uh, not so great division. So I'm very, I want to say bullish, but I'm I'm optimistic that he can at least provide the Colts with a more modern take on the quarterback position. I hope so. I hope so for Michael Pittman's sake. And, and big ups to Matt Ryan for handling that about as professional as you can do that as well. Um, he's always been a guy that's never been a, a, a me first guy. So for him to, you know, we hear all about the, the Brett Farbs not wanting to take Aaron Rodgers under his wing and the whole Aaron Rodgers thing. Maybe it's a green Bay thing. Who knows about not really wanting to be there for Jordan love, but it's good to see like a guy like Matt Ryan, you know, I'm going to help uh, Ellinger out, you know, as, as much as he needs it. So it's great to see you're, you're muted Coop. I was doing. I was doing my best mime impression. I was doing my best Nelson, Nelson Aguilar, trying to be as quiet as possible on the field. Yeah, there at Howard's got Howard. <laughs> it's Halloween. Me and Howard are both being mimes for Halloween. Yeah. Uh, so, but anyway, um, what I was saying is that Frank Wright came out and said that um, that they went to Matt Ryan. They said we're going to get you a running game. We're going to get you an O line. And then this week he said, "Hey, we didn't deliver that to him. We had to go with somebody more mobile." That's how they sold him on it. Is what it is. Yeah. Um, and then we'll just wrap this up real quick. One question that we want answered about our player situation in week eight. Uh, since Britt and Howard went, Coop, what do you think? Yeah, I'll say uh, a question that Bill Belichick today refused to answer, which is what is going on with the Patriots quarterbacks? I would love to, I would love for it just to be Mac Jones the rest of the year, sorted out in the offseason. But did you guys see Belichick in the press conference today? Did not miss them. He he pulled the cla- He pulled another. We're on to Cincinnati, where he answered every question. Every question they asked, he said, "We'll have to see how it looks today." So they were like, "They were like, well, what do you think about this?" He goes, "We'll have to see how it looks today." I wish somebody asked him. I wish they were like, "Hey, Bill, how do you think things are going to look today?" Just so he could, just so he would answer back. We'll have to see how it looks today. But he, I think he did about five or six in a row where he said, "We'll have to see how it looks today." So he's not giving anybody answers. I obviously need them. I want them. So does John and Pemba. We're big Patriots fans. I don't even care who it is. Just pick somebody and make them the quarterback for the rest of the year. That's what I want. No more messing around. It's too. It's. It's. It's too much, man. It's too much. Yeah, uh, Howard. What about you? I mean, I'll, I'll bring it back to the Ellinger conversation. I, I do. One of the questions I have is: is can he revitalize this offense? If he if he is more mobile than Matt Ryan, can that help uh, energize things? Can you know the wide receivers? Because I mean, listen, I have I have a lot of Michael Pittman. I've got a lot of Alec Pierce. Um, I, I want to see if these guys are going to be worth something, or if I'm going to end up having to you know replace Pittman as a uh, as a wideout. So, uh, you know, that's that's the big thing for me this weekend. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it here and just, you know, my take so I can at least, you know, just put it on tape and we have it is that I do. My hope is and my expectation is that Ellinger does kind of just juice up this offense a little bit, just get it out of that staleness that it's at. Um, I, you know, I want to see him and Pittman connect and, and show that Pittman is that that alpha male on that team. Uh, and then I look at, you know, for, for DFS purposes, because it's moments like this, when a backup QB comes in, you look, you look to the player that he's thrown to the most 
during practices and stuff like that, Michael Strawn is going to be a guy who I know he's just going to be sitting in my dartboard because I think that, that the two of them have, you know, practiced together uh, plenty that when, when he is, when Ellinger is rolling out and he's looking downfield, he knows where Strawn's going. He doesn't know where the other guys are going. He's not a hundred percent there. So I think Strawn becomes a guy. I think Pierce stays a guy. I think Paris Campbell's the one who kind of loses out. He was, you know, he was bonding nicely with Matt Ryan, but mm, no, not, not for Sam. So that's, that's what I want to see this week. Yeah. I mean that, and that they brought, they, they had Alec Pierce for the first time play every snap. So could, it could be the ushering out of Paris Campbell rest in, rest in peace to a, uh, our generation's Curtis Samuel in his two game stretch <laughs> of catching double, <laughs> double digit targets. Hey, but you never, you never know though. That's the thing with the new quarterback. You do never know, but um, you're right. The, Mobile QBs don't like to dump it down. And I mean, this guy ran the ball 554 times in college in four years, 33 rushing touchdowns. So that's, that's no joke. That's for real. Like, so sellers, were not using them in DFS. Stop it. <laughs> and, oh, sellers, oh sellers will be dude. <laughs> sellers, will be. sellers is the hot take DFS machine. It's strong 3k though on, on DraftKings. I'm Gotta sure Strawn right? is 3K. He's talking about Ellinger being 4K on draft. I'm going to say, yeah. let's do an Ellinger, Jelani Woods, Strawn set. <laughs> so, let's just make it as gross as possible. Bring it so, back so to Max Milne, and we're good to go, right? <laughs> Disgusting, dude. Can't wait to see, can't wait to see uh, Sellers' victory lap, his $5 win with that team, dude. That's gonna sadly do something like that that wins like the Millie. And he will around the house. That's what we love about him, dude. That's what we love about him. He's not scared to go hot, dude. He goes all the way hot, man. He's only got one temperature. (laughs) Maybe I'll have to play uh, Strawn. He'll be my next uh, 3K punt wide receiver success story. I played uh, Wanda Wandale Robinson, and then I hit the Tyquan Thornton nuts the other. So let's go. Yeah, that was nice. Britt, what are you scared about? Yeah. Well, I'm not scared about it. I want to see a little bit more from Travis Etienne against a decent run defense. Um, We saw last week that he's obviously able to handle a full workload and he looks healthy and he looks good doing it. Um, But aside from a few games like Denver's run defense has been pretty decent in holding the running backs. Um, (laughs) Yes, I hope so. Sellers, I really hope so. For the audio listeners, he's winning a million this week. Um, But I just really want to do it on winning a million. (laughs) What he'll be able to do against a tougher run defense um, when there's really no backing behind him aside from Jamichael Hasty. You know, if he fumbles, what's how is his mentality going to be going back into that game? So I was sold on him going into the season, but I'm just I'm I'm ready to see it. Yeah, is the guy that I got for like nineteen dollars in King's Classic. I'm very excited to see Travis Etienne season uh, fully unfold now that uh, James Robinson has been excommunicated uh, from the Jacksonville equation. Um, I'm worried a little bit about uh, Austin Eckler, not even Austin Eckler, just the fact that he's pretty much been carrying this Chargers offense, and now Mike Williams is going to be out roughly four weeks. Keenan Allen is just coming back. He was on a snap count last week, didn't play the entire second half. Um, they're going to be running out the Michael Bandys and the DeAndre Carters of the world. Um, so in the Jason Moores of the world, uh, there's a 3K wide receiver for you. But um, yeah, it's pre- and then not, not to mention the whole Herbert Rib thing, too. Um, so Eckler has been just getting absolutely shelled with targets. And it's been great for fantasies. He's wide receiver or running back number one in fantasy right now in PPR. Um, but I just wonder how long this can continue because, you know, defenses are going to come up and they're going to need some plays out of these out of these wide receivers. If Keenan Allen comes back this week and is Keenan Allen or no, not this week, but is, you know, next week after the bye, um, you know, hopefully we can get a fully 100 uh, percent snap share of the Keenan Allen of old because that's really going to help this offense moving forward. But, um, you know, Ke- uh, Keenan Allen. I mean, he's on, on the wrong side of 30 or it's going to be on the wrong side of 30. Losing Mike Williams just stinks. I'm just not really sold on that passing game with Herbert already banged up and Gerald Everett's going to have to take on more of a, an expansive role in this offense. So um, just something for after the bye. 
Um, pretty concerned about that. But ride Austin Eckler as long as you got him, ride that wave. Um, and then, you know, with the Patriots quarterback thing that Coop was talking about, um, you could have just edited the movie at that uh, at Bailey Zappi's first drive there. Uh, that would have been good. Just end the end the movie there, throw up the Disney logo, and you, you got money. You're printing money. Yeah, I gotta say, with Mike Williams, man, he's gotta stop playing this game like a crash test dummy. I feel like every game, every time he goes for the ball, he's like, "I'm just gonna jump off." It's like jackass. He's like, "I'm gonna jump off this roof and catch the ball." And I don't, I don't. He's like, "Get something." He's like, "Don't worry, my clavicle stopped the uh, the fall there." Like every year, this guy with the it's something. I just, I don't know, man. Some guys are injury prone, but this guy, you when you watch him play, he has no fear, man. He Mike Williams is a baller, but you gotta at a certain point you have to worry about self preservation. Yeah, it's like the Simpsons gag where Homer and Bart had pots and pans on their heads and they <laughs> yeah, run into like, each other in the, in like, the hallway. Dude, you let a couple targets go, bro. You know what I mean? Like you can't catch every single one of them, dude. Just let right. a couple go over your head. It's not turkey. Go back to the huddle. Family. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so which defense do you like better, Philly versus Pitt or New, uh, New England versus the Jets? Buddy, Philly, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I don't can know. Can, can, just I, trade yeah, 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 Robert can, I, can I give a parting gift here? Absolutely. I'm going to give you guys the Sellers special DK lineup for this week. Let's go. All right. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> here it is. This is this is Sellers. Write this down. Get a How much pay. salary are you leaving it on this one? I'm leaving only two hundred dollars on the table. Okay. Okay. I was gonna say there's like five grand left. It is a seller. That's, what I, was, that's what I was waiting for. I <laughs> all was waiting all right. for all three. Uh, hit us, Howard. You gotta know how to fill uh, in the blanks, right? I'm so, writing this down. I'm writing this down. What did you got? Sam Ellinger. Okay. My running backs. Well, you. All right. I'll give you the. I'll give you like the whole stack here, so that you can go. It's Ellinger with uh, with Strawn. And Jelani okay. Woods, as uh, as Britt said. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I stopped writing. No, no, no. You're running it back. You're running it back with Terry McLaurin against this stack. Okay, okay. okay. I like that. Your running backs are Derrick Henry against Houston. Oh, Ooh. God. Yeah. That's going to be Tony amazing. Pollard against Chicago. Oh, okay, okay. I'm writing again. I'm writing again. Your next, <laughs> your, your next wide receiver is Tyreek Hill. Oh, well, you can't miss there. No. Your flex, against the Lions? Uh, your, 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 your flex is going to be DeAndre Hopkins and his <sighs> billion targets. How much does Jolene Wood cost? A dollar? He might give you salary back. There you it's go. And, of- the, and, and, and throw down that Eagles D. Oh, you get the Eagles D in? See? Wow. Perfect. Perfect. Dude, so Terry McLaurin, I will say, he, he might be better with Taylor Heineke. No Definitely joke. Definitely better with Taylor Heineke. I went oh, back yeah, and looked at the numbers, man. Yolo. Yeah. We've had a sample size, 17 games, 123 targets over the 17 games. And then this week he gets eight. Pff, wheels up. This lineup's kind of sick, except Jelani Woods. Man, if this hits, <laughs> Sellers is going to run around the neighborhood naked. I have no doubt whatsoever, and I'm actually a little terrified because this sounds like a pretty decent. Yeah. How did you? Well, so wait, wait, wait. How much is Tony Pollard? If you, if you don't like Jelani Woods and you want to okay. just go with the, uh, you go, uh, you go Granson if you like Granson better. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. You can uh, you can go either Hendershot or Ferguson from, uh, from and, Dallas. Oh. Ferg, no, it's Ferg Dog. We talked to Calvin Watkins this morning. He said it's Ferg. He says it's Ferg. I I thought it would be Hendo, but he said Jake Ferguson. I but I don't off in the mirror, and I said it's Hendo. No, you might as well go Jelani Woods. Yeah, you know, I bet they've I bet they've had Ellinger working with Jelani Woods in practice. I, I like the, I kind of like the Woods call, dude. Or you go with the Houston guys. Does OJ Howard catch that touchdown pass because they have no other wide receivers available? OJ Howard hasn't caught a pa- ha- caught a touchdown. Aikens. Jordan, Jordan Aikens was getting a lot. No, last no, week. no. We're, you you sold me on Jelani Woods. We're coming back to Jelani Woods. Lock it. How in. much is pa- no? How much is Pollard though? Five K. What's that? Gotta be, he's how gotta be cheap. Pollard? Pollard's sixty one hundred. Wow, that's kind of expensive. How are you, dude? How are we getting Tyreek Hill and Henry in the same lineup? Those got to be top Ellinger most expensive is, players. Yeah. All right, Ellinger's 4K. 4K. Oh, okay. 4K. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So right off the bat, there Woods is twenty five hundred. Now I can't find him in this uh, in this thing to find. I'm gonna play. It. I'm gonna play this cash lineup against Ty uh, yeah. on this week. Wow, but that's I mean, a lineup. Henry's eighty four. Tyreek is eighty five, and Hopkins is seventy four. Those are your three most expensive. Mm. Pieces here. 
and you get both the good chalk. You get Henry versus the what? Henry versus the Texans, and Tyreek Hill versus the Lions. And Pretty, uh, Howard against Chicago. That's why you're the guy, dude. Wow. There you go, right. Sellers. You're my boy. I need to- Return of the chalk. I got burned so badly on Josh Jacobs chalk last week. Jacobs uh, bad chalk this week. And Pemba decided on the, if you listen to the fantasy alarm podcast coming out tomorrow and Pemba is very much in on Henry, very much out on Josh Jacobs for DFS, for DFS and redraft. You start him everywhere, but that's John and Pemba. Good chalk, bad chalk. He's not liking that chalk on, on Jacobs this week. Right. Well, yeah. Cause I played, you know, kind of i played Brees hall i played uh damien peters i played a little bit eckler just to kind of get off of the jacobs chalk and yeah. get different and then Brees hall just uh, he was in all like the good good oh, lineups yeah. the worst oh, dude, and then jacobs was... runs for three touchdowns <laughs> my uh my good good the... lineups had amon ross st brown and dk metcalf oh brutal brutal oh yeah oh. tough <laughs> oh no <laughs> hate to see it. Ugh. all right well howard i mean we'll have we'll have to have you back maybe we'll have you on a third time this year uh if your schedule allows it i don't know well i guess run. we're just gonna have to wait on alan lazard's condition and find out yeah <laughs> i will let's if alan lazard scores 11 touchdowns like you predicted we'll have to we'll push I back bro eight, eight we'll, touchdowns 1100 yards if he scores 20 touchdown. If he breaks Randy Moss's 23 touchdown record, <laughs> we will push back Barack Obama. We'll have you on for a third time. You know, we do have Obama on the schedule. We will push him back for you, Howard. You are the boss around here and you're the best. So we'll do our best to get you back on. Yes. Gosh, Thank thanks. you so much for coming <laughs> on. Gosh. Gosh. <laughs> Guys. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Gee, <what's going> <laughs> <laughs> no um yeah so uh if you haven't hit the like button uh please do so we can all feed feed our kids um you know my kids are eating ketchup packets so we need uh we need we need all that money we need to get up to that top ramen uh we need to get into that kind of tax bracket so uh please go ahead and do so if you haven't uh brit coop anything else before we uh head out just good luck everybody this week it's Use promo wild. code alarm yeah, everywhere uh, factory, that's why if you play factory. if you, uh, uh, let's just say it this way if you're gonna sign up for a new fantasy football site type an alarm it probably gonna work it's probably gonna give you some sort of bonus all right we, we oh, got I'll, I'll give you i'll give you one better all right if you don't subscribe to fantasy alarm go to fantasyalarm.com slash bender use the promo code bender it'll trigger a seven day free trial <sighs> what okay. Right, so you can uh, you can you can cancel it right afterwards if you want, or you ride with us and using the promo code Bender gets it uh, gets that fifty percent off for the for the first six months of your subscription. So it's less than twenty bucks a month for the next six months. But that also you get that free trial. We give you that little taste in the beginning, so you can take it for a spin and see what you think. Howard Bender, Mister Cool on the show. Happy Halloween to everybody out there. Free seven days and fifty percent off, dude. All oh the God. promo. Why don't I have promo code? Where is there a cool promo code? Dude? Promo code what? Lazard. It's over on Reddit. <laughs> dude, they they like, get what. Sorry, but they, it's behind the blocker. You're gonna have to dig uh, behind it. No, those yeah, dudes on Reddit get that one. They get what we give them, and they're gonna have to eat it. <laughs> That's, uh, we're doing oh, our man. best over on Reddit. We're doing our best over there. <laughs> the uh, the Reddit scene. Coop, have a great honeymoon. Uh, yeah, please don't come now. back with an accent. Uh, for the love of God, I'm definitely oh, wearing a turtleneck or something, right? It'll be like this. You sound like you're from London. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no question uh, though go yeah go have a drink with murph and uh yeah i'm hitting murph are you on sure. him? i saw i, I, I already saw talked to him. him he was yeah. uh, he's on the show i haven't hit him up when i'm in i'll be in london for a little bit so do it yeah, i'll be fine then yeah yeah c- don't wear that revolutionary uh get up please don't we don't need to start world war i might i actually would, i was thinking about bringing it where in iceland because it is it, i will be in iceland for halloween they do celebrate it there but i don't <laughs> that is, yeah i'm thinking about it we'll see but i um, all anybody out there all my articles i'm still writing them um i already talked to the boss john and pemba we got it all set up so we're not gonna miss a beat on that we're good to go 100%. All right. Well, for Howard, for Britt, 
for Coop. I'm Kevin Tompkins. And Coop, since you won't be here for the next couple weeks. Toodles. <laughs>